The Life and Legacy of the Commander of the Faithfuls, Imam Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam. The first man in Islam, the cousin of the Prophet, his son-in-law, the first defender and supporter of the Prophet. We will discuss his sacrifice and his contributions over 30 episodes. So please join me. I'm your brother, Mustafa Al-Qazwini. Salaamu Alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, all our praise and gratitude are to God, the cherisher, the sustainer, the creator. May his peace and blessings be upon all of his messengers and the seal of the messengers Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and his pure and immaculate progeny and family and his righteous companions. May the peace of the Lord be upon you and with you, my dear brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So Imam Ali alayhi salam was born inside the Kaaba. And Banu Hashim, being his extended family, rejoiced this event. And the one who was the most joyful and excited was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, who was 30 years older than Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali being his first cousin. And at, the, at that time, the Prophet lived in the house of Abu Talib. But when he married Khadija, he left the house and he was living by Khadija, with Khadija. So he used to come every single day to look at this newborn baby. This relationship and this attachment started from day one when Imam Ali was born. And the Prophet was keen to come and watch this baby growing not only watching him growing, feeding him, taking care of him. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَوْضِعِي مَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِالْقَرَابَةِ الْقَرِيبَةِ وَالْمَنْزِلَةِ الْخَصِيصَةِ Oh people, you know my position with the Prophet, how close it was, how intimate it was, how the Prophet cherished me and loved me and raised me and took care of me. He put me in his lap. He attaches me to his chest. He made me smell his fragrance. And he would feed me himself. The Prophet would feed me himself bite by bite. وَكَانَ يَمْضَغُ الشَّيْءِ ثُمَّ يُلْقِمُنِيهِ Sometimes he would put the food in his mouth, then he takes it out. Like a mother, the same way a mother feeds the newborn baby. Like a nurse. فَمَا وَجَدَ لِي كَذْبَةً فِي قَوْلٍ وَلَا خَطْلَةً فِي فعل. Because he was feeding me, physically. He was nurturing me. He was nourishing me. Spiritually, فَمَا وَجَدَ لِي كَذْبَةً فِي قول. He never found me to be a liar. وَلَا خَطْلَةً فِي فعل. Nor I made a mistake or an error in my life. Nor I deviated with my actions and my sayings. That was the relationship of Ali to the Prophet from day one. No separation between them. A union, full union between those individuals. 
At that time, Quraysh experienced famine. There was a drought, and after the drought, there is famine. There is no enough food, neither for humans nor for animals. And Abu Talib, alayhi salam, had a big family. And he had many children. His brother Al-Abbas, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, alayhi salam, he was doing well. Financially, he was well, well off. So the Prophet went to his uncle Al-Abbas. He said to him, Ya Am, if you see that we go to your brother Abu Talib and try to bring some ease to his life. He has a big family. He has a big responsibility. He has difficulty feeding his children. So let's go. Try to help him out. Let's take some of his children under our wings. So he convinced his uncle Al-Abbas. They both went to Abu Talib. Abu Talib said, okay, if you just leave Aqil for me, Aqil being the youngest, and take the others. Al-Abbas took Ja'far ibn Abi Talib under his wing. The Prophet took Ali at the age of six under his wing. And he said, لَقَدْ اخْتَرْتُ مَنْ اخْتَارَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ I chose the one that God has chosen above you. So they took those kids to their custody. And from that day, the age of six, Ali was with the Prophet day and night until the moment the soul of the Prophet departed this lower life, this physical life. He was not separated from the Prophet. He was always with him. Except for a few hours, few days, because the Prophet wanted him to be in certain places, like the day of Tabuk, or like the day the Prophet left Mecca to Medina, because Ali was doing something more important. Those two individuals were inseparable from each other. And this is how this spiritual journey of nourishment started between the teacher being the prophet and the student being Ali. The leader, the prophet and the disciple, Ali. The master, the prophet and the servant, Ali. This is how this relationship started. And these were by designs, the design of God. God wanted to create a successor to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And they lived in a society which was <clears throat> characterized by the age of ignorance, the age of limitation, the age of intellectual, intellectual and and spiritual and social limitation. A society was morally, morally bankrupt, Al Jahili. They lived in the midst of that society, but they were not contaminated. Ali lam yasjud li sana min qat. Ali never bowed down to any idol during his entire life. Walam yushrik billahi tarfatain. Never he associated anyone with God. He purely worshipped God. That was Ali ibn Abi Talib. And the very first person to accept the Prophet and endorse him and support him after he launched his ministry and he became the messenger of God was Ali ibn Abi Talib And Anas ibn Malik, one of the companions of the Prophet states, 
أنزلت النبوة على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يوم الاثنين The day was Monday when the Prophet became the messenger of God وصلى علي عليه السلام يوم الثلاثاء علي started to worship God and stand by the Prophet behind the Prophet to worship God was Tuesday Salman al-Muhammadi says أول هذه الأمة ورودا على نبيها الحوض أولها إسلاما علي بن أبي طالب The first person who's going to arrive at the pond the pond of Kawthar the pond of abundance of water on the day of judgment is the one who was the first was the first to embrace the Prophet and that is Ali ibn Abi Talib Listen to this story. Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, he said, I heard Umar ibn al-Khattab, one day Umar heard some rumors about Imam Ali. Some people, you know, out of jealousy. They were slandering Imam Ali. So he went to them, Umar ibn al-Khattab himself, he went to them. He said, Kuffu and dhikri Ali ibn Abi Talib. Stop what you are saying about Ali. Stop. Stop this nonsense. Say nothing except khair. Goodness about Ali. فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ I myself, I heard the Prophet says the following about Imam Ali. في علي ثلاث خصال وددت لو أن لي واحدة منهن If I can get only one of his characters it would have been better for me much better than everything else that God would give me. One day Omar says one day I was sitting next to me Abu Bakr next to me Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah and other companions and Ali was sitting the Prophet puts his hand on his shoulder on Ali's shoulder and he says to him Anta awwalul muslimina islaman you are the first one among the Muslim community among the Ummah who accepted Islam wa anta awwalul mu'minina imanan and you are the first one among the Ummah who have faith and has has deep faith in God. You represent to me what Aaron represented to Moses. A liar is the one who claims that he loves the Prophet while he hates Imam Ali. So you cannot separate between the two. If you love the Prophet and you don't love Imam Ali, it means you don't love the Prophet. If you love Imam Ali and you don't love the Prophet, it means you don't love Imam Ali. There is no separation between the two. And this hadith has been narrated in many books of seerah and, and history. Tariq Dimashq, Ibn Asakir, Musnad Abi Hanifa, Tariq Al-Tabari, Al-Isaba Fi Ma'rifat Al-Sahaba, Tariq Baghdad, and many books of seerah that narrates the life of the Prophet and also the books of history. Ali was young when he accepted Islam. Some people say he was 10, some people say he was 12. It doesn't matter. He was the first person to accept Islam and the first one to pray behind the Prophet. He himself says, The only one who prayed before me, before I did, was the Prophet Muhammad. And listen to what Ibn Abbas says. Ibn Abbas says, 
and this this is narrated in Shawahid al-Tanzil, the book of Tafsir called Shawahid al-Tanzil. The author is Al-Hasakani, probably from Hasaka. He says, Ibn Abbas says, when God says, وَرْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ أَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَرْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ إنها نزلت في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلي بن أبي طالب. This verse meant those who bow down are the Prophet and Imam Ali وهما أول من صلى وركع because they were the very first people who did pray and they did bow. They they were the very first. So God is asking the community of the believers to take their example and learn from them because they were the first. And the Prophet at that time used to do the prayer secretly in Mecca because Quraysh, his opponents, had zero tolerance for Muhammad and his religion. Quraysh, they did not like the prayers because they didn't like God, because they did not believe in God, because they worshipped idols, because they were mentally challenged, spiritually challenged. They worship idols that they themselves created. They create with their own hands and then they stand before them and worship them. So the Prophet had to protect himself when he does the prayers. So sometimes he goes inside to some neighborhoods outside the city center so nobody can watch him. And he will take Imam Ali with him and they will perform their prayers. One day Abu Talib saw them. Abu Talib who was the defender of the Prophet. He saw them praying. So he asked his son, he asked his nephew, the Prophet. The Prophet said, هَذَا دِينُ اللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ وَدِينُ رُسُولِهِ وَدِينُ أَبِيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ بَعَثَنِ اللَّهُ بِهِ نَبِيًّا إِلَى الْعِبَادِ وَأَنْتَ يَا عَمْ أَحَقُّ مَنْ أَبْدَيْتُ النَّصِيحَةَ لَهِ وَدَعَوْتُهُ إِلَى الْهُدَى وَأَحَقُّ مَنْ أَجَابَنِي إِلَيْهُ وَأَعَانَنِي عَلَيْهُ What you are seeing is that we worship God. This is the tradition of our grandfather Abraham. And you, Abu Talib, you are the most rightful people to this religion. You are the person that I invited him to this religion and he accepted. So Abu Talib was, was encouraging them to continue their prayers without any fear. His son Ali said to his father, يا أبتي قد آمنت برسول الله واتبعته واتبعته وصليت معه I have accepted Muhammad I am following him and I am praying behind him the father answered Abu Talib said to his son يا بني أما إنه لم يدعك إلا إلى الخير فألزمه Muhammad invited you for nothing but goodness but success and prosperity and salvation so stick to him. Stay with him. Don't leave Muhammad. Do not depart with Muhammad. His path is the path of salvation. And of course, when the Prophet used to pray, Abu Talib, uh, Abu Sufyan was also there to persecute, to harass, and to punish the Prophet, Abu Sufyan, Akhnas ibn Shariq, and many others. They would lay in wait to see which one of the Muslims pray in public, of course, sometimes. You know, there were alleyways, dark places. They would go and hide to do their prayers. So Abu Sufyan, his job was to go and persecute them and harass them. And then comes the Holy Quran 
and asks the Prophet to deliver his message and announce it and declare it to next of kin. First to his immediate family. To Bani Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib is the grandson of the uh, grandfather of the Prophet. He had many children. He had many offspring. So God in Surah Al-Shu'ara said to the Prophet, now it's time that you declare your prophethood to your immediate family member. So the Prophet asked Imam Ali, said to him, Ya Ali, I want you to gather 40 men, the children of Abdul Muttalib, let's make food and a drink for them, and I have an announcement to, to make. So they gathered. When they gathered and they ate, they drank, the Prophet stood. As soon as the Prophet opened his mouth to say something, Abu Lahab being the uncle of the Prophet said, لَقَدْ سَحَرَكُمْ صَاحِبُكُمْ Muhammad has bewitched you. He cast a spell on you. Bewitched you. So all of them, they left. No one stayed there to listen. The Prophet repeated the process the following day. Again, he made food. He invited them. After they ate, Imam Ali was preparing the food and the drink. After they finished eating and drinking, the Prophet stood. And there, he said, I brought you the best of this life and the hereafter. I am the messenger of God. And فَأَيُّكُمْ يُؤَازِرُنِي عَلَى هَذَا الْأَمْرِ عَلَى أَنْ يَكُونَ أَخِي وَوَصِيِّ وَخَلِيفَتِي فِيكُمْ Who is willing to stand with me? To help me in this matter, in this task, in this project to spread Islam. So he would be my brother, my successor. And my disciple after me. He would lead the ummah after me. فَأَحْجَمُ History says. Books of history. They say فَأَحْجَمُ They declined. They refused to say we will help you. Except that young man whose name is Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Prophet holds his hand. He says then he would be the leader, the caliph after you. So they started making fun of the Prophet. And then they turned to the father of Imam Ali and they said to him, Hey, Abu Talib, Muhammad is asking you to listen to your son, Ali. They made fun and then they dispersed. But the struggle continues and the message continues. And this companionship between these two, the Prophet on the one hand and Imam Ali السلام, on the other hand, continues. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته